Hi, my name is Ishani Aziz, and today I'm going to talk to you about Jedi parasites, or more specifically, how Dicrosoelium dendriticum affects ant brains. You're probably wondering about the title. Well, I call them Jedi parasites because they're literally capable of mind control. You probably won't have heard of this parasite because it only causes a minor gut disease called Dicrosoeliasis in humans. However, in animals, Dicrosoelium dendriticum, or DD for short, is incredible. It belongs to the genus of trematode worms and actually looks kind of cute. Don't be fooled though, it has an amazing and terrifying life cycle. As in all things, of course, it all starts with cow dung. The embryonated eggs of this parasite are found in cow feces. A snail will use this as its source of food, unknowingly ingesting the parasite. The snail is now the intermediate host. Here, the parasite develops from embryo to either a sporocyst or myricidium. If it is a myricidia, the parasite will then develop into a circare. So let's take a quick look inside the snail. Embryos begin to develop in the stomach of the snail. Now the parasite makes its way to the digestive gland of the snail. They stay there until they grow some more. Once they have become circare, the parasite will go to the snail's respiratory chamber and gather some friends for departure. The inner wall of the snail's respiratory chamber will become irritated, and in an attempt to get rid of the parasites, it will coat them in mucus. Once this is done, the snail, who has had enough of this, will cough out the mucus along with our leaf-like friends. The parasites will now lie in wait for their next host. An ant wanders along some grass to find a few slimy pearls. The snail mucus, which have pheromones that are irresistible to the ant, is then taken by the ant to its colony to be eaten. Now comes the cool part. What scientists have observed is that at night, ants that have feasted on this infected mucus will now wander away from their colony. They select a random blade of grass and in a seemingly dazed manner will stay perched on the top. So what exactly is going on in this little guy's body? Well, within one hour, the parasites penetrate the hemocell the gaster, and then the alley trunk. Most importantly, at least one will be found in the ant's brain. This region is the primary site of metasocarial development. In the brain, the parasite affects the suprasophical region which controls most of the nervous center which directly controls the acella, the antennae, and other sensory organs. The functions that these carry out will all be impaired when the parasite enters the ganglion. For example, the acella and antennae aid the ant's navigation, which is probably why it wanders away at night. Also, carpenter worker ants are normally strongly photophobic, which means light hurts their eyes, but scientists observe that the affected ants seem to just stay on river rocks exposed to the bright rays of sun for many hours, suggesting that the light regulation center of the suprasophical ganglion is impaired. Then one day, a hungry cow comes along grazing grass, and the poor ant is eaten along with a blade of grass. The now adult parasites settle down and produce more eggs to release into the cow's bile duct, which eventually end up in the cow dung. Then a snail will come along, and it all starts over again. You've just witnessed one of the most amazing life cycles out there. So next time you watch a Star Wars movie, just think where they got the idea from.